uh, part two. Uh, so freedom in Christ. Uh, we did it, freedom in, in Jesus. It was the title on Sunday, but I just fine-tuned a little bit. Freedom, freedom in Christ, but with a look on temptation. Okay, so first of all, since America, we start, uh, what was last week? What did we celebrate? Independence Day, right? So we as Christians should celebrate Independence Day when? Every day. Every day. Because Jesus came to do what? To set us free. Set us free from what? From ourselves, number one. From all, everything that holds us in bondage. Uh, so Jesus came to give us freedom. And we have to understand as born-again believers that we have freedom in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's see our first scripture. And one of the things when I teach on Sundays, I can't have the, uh, the back and forth. So today... It's a chance to speak about it, and, and you might have something to say about it, so that's why I have to ask questions on it. So, John 8, 31, uh, from the Amplified. Giselle, please. Let's all read it together. Ready? Read. So, Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, hold fast to my teachings, and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. Stop, this is Bible study. How many are truly his disciples? Raise your hand if you believe you are truly his disciple. Okay, so then, if you are truly his disciple, to be truly his disciples, what must we do? Hold fast to what? To his teachings and live in accordance with them. You follow me? Because some people know the teachings, but they don't live according to them. All right, so it says... If you abide, so you see the word if? If, that means that a lot of people do not, and they call themselves Christians. All right, and that's why they don't see the benefit. Why does nothing good happen to me? I'm a Christian, okay? Are you abiding in God's word? Are you holding fast to his teachings? Or are you just, just because you go to church or a Bible study, does that mean that you're holding uh, to his word? You follow the difference? So it's not just coming to a Bible study. So now if we're going to come to Bible study, and this is the faithful group here, and you come to Sunday service, we're investing our time, right? And that's the most important thing that we have, time. Shouldn't we do what we're learning? Right? We're giving our time. We're giving our funds. So we might as well do it. Or else, what's the purpose of coming here? All right? So, so again, so let's read it again from there. Everybody, ready, please? If you abide in my word, Hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them. You are truly my disciples. 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Does everybody know the truth? No. And, and, and like some people think that God wants them to be sick. Some people think that God wants them to be poor. Some people think that God... Uh, doesn't want good things to happen to them. And they believe in the lies of this world, the lies of some denominations, some, some, some lies of people. When the Bible says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How do you find freedom? Through Christ. But well, where is it? It's here. It, it, it's here. In prison, they have the prison library, right? And those, hopefully nobody here has been in prison. And they say they have a sign over in the library, what the law library is called, but they say, in there lies your freedom. Because you've got to look at the, 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 um, the laws and the cases and find the case that pertains to you to use it for an appeal. And they have that, that in one of these books lies your freedom. All right? So the same thing. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Eddie. The truth is Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The truth. Amen. But just, okay, I know Jesus, and you're living messed up. You don't know Jesus. Right, so just knowing Jesus not say I know Jesus, but how do you know how do you get to know Jesus? Through his word, you see? So people don't have a problem saying I know Jesus, but people have a problem reading and studying the Bible. And you, you understand you can't know somebody unless you spend time with them. And the only time where you spend time with Jesus is learning, reading the Bible. There's no way about it. So when you accept the Lord Jesus, you're signing up for a lifetime of studying the Bible. And some people don't have a problem accepting the Lord Jesus, but they think they, they want to. Um, how many people read the newspapers? The, the daily news, whatever newspaper. You read a newspaper on a daily, raise your hand if you read a newspaper. And do you read it from top to cover? You know, cover to cover most of the certain sections? 
And once you get out of it, you like stay out of it until you get whatever it is that you want, right? With the Bible, man, we have to learn that we have to spend time in it. Some of us say we read the Bible. Okay, I read the Bible. Man. Right? I punched it. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to spend time in the Bible. Somebody had their hand up? Yes, Glyce. Okay, what Eddie said, the truth is Jesus, is the person. So it's knowing that person, because actually that person is who you are. Right. And that's why you want to know the truth. And the truth is the word, so it's knowing that, who you are, and then this way you can walk and experience and manifest. All right, and now John 1.1. 1, 1. What does John 1.1 1, 1 say? Through. Okay, give me 1.1, 1, 1, right? In the beginning, before all time was what? The word, the word and Christ, and the word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. The Word. Talk about the Word. The Word. Verse 2. Go. This is, this is good. Yeah. He was present originally with God. 3. All things were made and came into existence through Him. What, are, what is that included in all things? Everything. All things. All right. Go. And without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Who made the planets? Right there. Who made the stars? Who made the oceans? Who made everything? God. So once we get to know him, we're going to learn, our mind's going to open up. Verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Verse 5. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or absorbed it, or appropriated it, and is unreceptive to it. Verse 6. There came a man sent from God, whose name was, I think I would, one more verse, right? Verse 7, where he says that Jesus was the word. So I'm reading from the Amplified. Verse 7, quickly. Because now I think it turns into John, right? The Baptist I'm talking about. Verse 8, verse 7. Give me verse 8. He was in writing himself. Okay, in verse 9. Okay, that's it. We're just up to verse 6. But I don't want to. So the point is this. As, G, as Eddie said, Jesus is the, is the truth. But we know that Jesus and the word cannot be separated. We have to learn the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right, so now, verse, go back to 8.31. We were at 33, I think. Let's go. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. And have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? All right, who here has been in bondage? Raise your hand. Okay, so uh, Ruben did it, so you've you never been in bondage. Okay, so I did Bible studies, I get to pick on you guys. I, I, I did. So bondage, bondage to anything. Being held, bondage to money, bondage to greed, bondage to a person. A bondage to a situation in bondage. Now, all of us, besides Reuben, that raised our hands. We we admit that we were in bondage, right? Mm -hmm. While we were in bondage, did we think that we were in bondage? Yeah. No. no, we thought we were free. And yet, now that we look back, see, man, I was so much. I was like wrapped around like a mummy. Uh, and, and I had chains around, ropes around everything. Yet, and at that time, I thought I was free. And that's what happens that people see and they don't really see. They think that they see, they don't see how messed up and in, in bondage that there are, but now that we see. So now here are the Jews, they're talking to Jesus saying, we've never been in bondage. What do you mean you're going to set me free? Does that happen in 214? To people that you're talking about Jesus, they say, well, I don't need Jesus. Has anybody ever told you, I, I'm good the way I am. I'm a good person. I don't hurt nobody. What do I need to go to church for? What do I need the Bible for? They're in bondage. Because they, that, that's their bondage right there. They think that they don't need uh, Jesus. And unfortunately, they're going to pay a price for that. Amen? Anyone have another point on that? I didn't need to pick on you, Ruben. Uh, so please, uh, on that. Anyone? On the, we understand that part? Verse, okay, verse 34. Jesus answered them, everybody. Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. What does that mean for somebody? Whoever commits sin is a slave. And, and give it to me from the Amplified. Go back to that verse. 34, 8. Uh, no. 8.34 Amplified. 34. Read it, go. 
Jesus answered them, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, whoever commits and practices sin is the slave of sin. Now it's a little bit better. So what does that mean for somebody? Commits sin but and practices it. It's a habit. And that sin has you by the, it, it, it gets you by the, they call it by the snout, like a ring in your snout, and that takes you wherever it is that, that it wants to take you. Can you be in sin, uh, in bondage to food? Okay, can you be in, in bondage to money? Can you be in bondage to lack of money? Okay, so poverty has you in bondage, okay? Can you be in bondage to a sickness? To a disease, okay? Can, uh, talk to me about being in bondage to a person. How can, give me some examples of people in bondage to other people. Brilliant. If uh, you're not living your own life and you're living for them, uh, they tell you what to do. You know, what, you know always trying to make them happy and you're unhappy in the process. Okay, so that's a bondage. Go ahead and dimensionalize. An idol. They become an idol to you. Okay. Okay, anyone? Give me more examples. This is important for us to know. Are people living in bondage? Uh, can a wife be in bondage to her husband? Yes. And won't leave him, even though he's abusing her, because, oh, he pays the bills. Uh, oh, oh, you know, uh, yes or no? So, is that bondage? All right? Can a husband be in bondage to a woman? Also, so, it, 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 there's a lot of bondages that are all, all around us. Can, are people in bondage to their jobs? <laughs> Get here now to work. Yes, master. Uh, okay. Then, uh, are people in bondage to their paycheck? People where if uh, you know they cannot miss because if, if they miss one week, their finances are out. Uh, you understand? They cannot go. Uh, that so they become in bondage to that job. So uh, as uh, there's a book, I don't know the name of it now, where uh, a the world. Uh, I want to see like a boss, right? How much do you want to pay, pay your employees? And I'm looking for an answer. Let me see if somebody has that wisdom right now. This, this is important to know. How much do you think that you should pay your employee? Oh, go ahead. Their worth. What they're worth? What does that mean? How much experience they have and what they do. Okay. They do the, 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 that's a good answer. That, that's an answer. Anyone else? Go ahead. The least. The least. That's an answer. Go ahead. Above the poverty line, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, the answer I'm looking for is you pay them enough that they have to come back to work the next day. If you pay them more, what are they going to do? I'll take the day off. I won't come. Uh, so, so that to keep them, if you notice most jobs, most people either they just make enough uh, or you're making more than enough. So there's like two categories. No, you're making less than, than you need. So most jobs... They're just keeping you there so that you come back, that you have to come back to uh, to kiss the ring, to be back to, to that job. Okay, that's the, I'm thinking about the world thing. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm talking about that's the world system. Because if you pay them, you know, more, then <laughs> if you had more than enough money, would you come to work the next day? You just have to take the day off, man. And, and, and the work and the boss needs you there at the company. Uh, all right, so remember that. But I'm not going to get off on that subject. But verse 35, but about slave or sin, ready, go now. Now a slave does not remain in a household permanently forever. The son of the house does remain forever. Verse 36, what does that mean to somebody? Verse 35. The son of the house does remain, who is a slave? Okay, and, and remember the one before he said the slave is your slave of what? Of sin? So that sin does not have a right to be in you forever. You choose to be in that sin or to be under, under its control. But remember, when our life is over and you accept the Lord Jesus, where are you, what are you going to have? Eternal life? And is there any sin over there? No, so you follow, so that's what it's saying. The son of the house does remain forever. So if we're in sin, if we're stuck in a sin, that sin 